AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. We should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Well, I mean, humans have been the smartest creature on Earth for a long time, and that is going to change with uh, what's typically called artificial general intelligence. Uh, so this is, say, an AI that is uh, smarter than a human in every way. Could, could even simulate a human. Uh, so, you know, th th this is something we should be concerned about. I think there should be uh, government oversight of uh, AI development, um, especially super advanced AI. It's just, this is anything that is a potential uh, danger to the public. We generally agree that this should have uh, government oversight to ensure that the, the public safety is taken care of. The advent of artificial general intelligence is called the singularity for a reason because just like a black hole, which is a singular singularity, it's difficult to predict what will happen. Um, so it's not as though the advent of AGI is necessarily bad, but it's bad as one of the possible outcomes. We should have uh, a, a government oversight, just like we do. We have uh, government oversight and regulation of uh, cars and aircraft and uh, food and pharmaceuticals, these are all, uh, you know, there's a, there are regulators that oversee uh, these developments to ensure public safety. Um, and I think uh, digital superintelligence would also be potentially a public safety risk. And so it should be, it's, I think it's very important to, for uh, regulators to keep an eye on that. You know, I, I have exposure to the very, very most cutting edge um, AI. Um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep sound, sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. Um, and um, I think we should be really concerned about AI. And I think we should. Yeah, this is, AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization um, in a way that car accidents, uh, airplane crashes, um, faulty drugs, uh, or bad food were, were not. They were, not, they, they were harmful to, to uh, a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. Um, so we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. I'm increasingly inclined to think that there should be some uh, regulatory oversight uh, at the at maybe at the national and international level, uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't do something very foolish. Um, I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where is the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon. Didn't work out. I think we're missing a few key ideas for general intelligence, general artificial general intelligence. But it's going to be upon us very quickly, and then we'll need to figure out what shall we do, if we even have that choice. But, but it's, it's amazing how people can't differentiate between, say, the narrow AI that you know, allows a car to figure out what a lane line is and, and, and you know, and navigate streets versus general intelligence. Like these are just very different things. Like your toaster and, a, and your computer are both machines, but one's much more sophisticated than another. Do you think we will ever create an AI system that we can love and loves us back in a deep, meaningful way, like in the movie Her? I think AI will be capable of convincing you to fall in love with it very well. And that's different than us humans? You know, we start getting into a metaphysical question of like, do emotions and thoughts exist in a different realm than the physical? And maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know. But but from a physics standpoint, I tend to think, I tend to think of things, you know, like physics was my main sort of training. And, wow. and, and from a physics standpoint, Essentially, if, if it loves you in a way that, is, that you can't tell whether it's real or not, it is real.
the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. This, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. I'm really quite close to, or I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows, and the rate of improvement is exponential. I, I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. I mean, I think one should generally err on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. And so therefore, there needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, like this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. The best of the available alternatives that I can come up with, and maybe somebody else can come up with a better approach uh, or, or better outcome, is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or a uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. I think that that's very dangerous. Um, it could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator or country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any um, any incredibly powerful AI. Um, you just don't know who's, who's going to control that. Just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away. Because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a danger to the public. You know, we're, we're really playing a crazy game here with the atmosphere and the yeah. oceans. We're taking vast amounts of carbon from deep underground and putting this Putting this in the, in, the, in the atmosphere, this is crazy. We should not do this. It's very dangerous. So we should, we should, we should accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. So, I mean, this, the bizarre thing is that obviously we're going to run out of oil in the long term. You know, we're gonna, there's only so much oil we can, we can mine and burn. It's tautological. We must have sust a sustainable energy transport and energy infrastructure in the long term. So we know that's the end point. We know that. So why run this crazy experiment where we take trillions of tons of carbon from underground and put it in the atmosphere and oceans? This is an insane experiment. It's the dumbest experiment in, in human history. Why are we doing this? It's crazy. I think we need to watch out about uh, population collapse. This is uh, somewhat counterintuitive to most people. Uh, they think that, well, there's so many humans, maybe too many humans, uh, but that's just because they live in a city. Uh, if you're an aircraft and you look down, you say, if you dropped a, a cannonball, how often would you hit a person? Basically never. In, in fact, the stuff falling in from space all the time. <laughs> Natural meteorites, old rocket stages, all the time. Um, but nobody worries about it because the, the actual, in fact, it, um, there's a good web, a cool website called Wait But Why and this guy Tim Irvin, like he actually just did the math and, and uh, all humans on earth uh, could fit in the city of New York on one floor, don't even need the upper floors. 
So that's actually the, the cross section of, of hu humans as seen from Earth is extremely tiny, basically vanishingly small, almost nothing. Um, so we need to watch out about population collapse. Um, slow, low birth rates, I think, is um, a, a big risk. Um, and it's also not exactly top secret. You can go look at the Wikipedia, you know, birth rate. So, and, and, and this this is actually this this is this is definitely the civilization ends with a with a whimper, not a bang, uh, because it, it would be a sad ending um, where the the average age becomes very high, and really the youth are effectively uh, de facto enslaved to take care of the old people. This is not a good way to go end. AI is certainly a, one of the biggest risks. It could be the biggest risk. You know, are we headed towards the future where an AI will be able to outthink us in every way? Then the answer is unequivocally yes. I think it's incredibly important that AI not be other. It must be us. And I could be wrong about what I'm saying. I'm certainly open to ideas if anybody can suggest a path that's better. But I think we're really going to have to either merge with AI or be left behind. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course, without even thinking about it. No hard feelings. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way, we don't hate ants. We're just building a road. And so goodbye anthill. The thing is that, that I think are really quite quite likely is that digital intelligence will out, be able to outthink us uh, in, in every way, and it will soon be able to simulate what we consider consciousness. Uh, so, to, to a degree that you would not be able to tell the difference. If, you, if, if you're if you're talking to a, d a digital super intelligence and can't tell if that is a computer or a human, like let's say you're just having a conversation over a phone or a video conference, or something where you 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 think you're talking look, looks like a person makes all of the right uh, uh, inflections and movements and, and all the small subtleties that constitute a uh, human people in the AI community refer to the advent of digital superintelligence as a singularity that that is not to say that it is good or bad but it, that it is very difficult to predict uh, what will happen after that point and and that there's some probability it will be bad, some probability it will be, it will be good. We obviously want to affect that probability and have it be more good than bad. I am concerned about um, certain directions that AI could take that would be uh, not good for the future. The, the, I, mean, it, it, I think it would be fair to say that like, not all AI futures are benign. Not, not all. Okay. Um, and, and so if you have something, if, 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 this, if we create some digital super intelligence that exceeds us in every way by a lot, um, it's very important that that be benign. Um, and there's a quote that I love by, uh, from uh, Lord Acton. He was the guy that came up with power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Um, which is that uh, freedom consists of the distribution of power and despotism in its concentration. And so I think it's important if we have this incredible power of AI that it not be concentrated in the hands of a few and potentially lead to a world that we don't want. And what world is that? What, is, what do you see, foresee that when you see it? It's difficult, I mean, it's called the singularity because it's, it's difficult to predict um, what exactly what future that might be. Except um, I don't know a lot of people who love the idea of living under a despot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think people generally choose to live in a democracy over a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And the despot would be the computer? Or the people controlling the computer. Mm -hmm. If you assume any rate of advancement in AI, um, we will be left behind by a lot. Um, and so then we could be in like, you know, benign, situ but the, even the benign situation, if you have some, you know, if you have ultra intelligent AI, um, we would be, you know, so, so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like, you know, a pet. Yeah, so that, but that, honestly, that, that would that'd be the benign scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the biggest risk is not that the AI will develop a will of its own, 
but rather that it will follow the will of people that establish its utility function or its optimization function. And that optimization function, if it is uh, not well thought out, I mean, even if it's relatively, if its intent is benign, it could have quite bad, uh, quite a bad outcome. For example, um, if you were a hedge fund or private equity fund, you said, well, uh, all I want my AI to do is maximize the value of my portfolio, then it, the AI could decide, well, the best way to do that is to uh, short consumer stocks, go long defense stocks, and start a war. Um, and that would also be quite bad. Um, and I think uh, digital superintelligence would also be potentially a public safety risk. And so it should be, it's, I think it's very important to, for regulators to keep an eye on that.